guys. Welcome back to this week's episode of Outside the Arena with Rob and Griff. I'm Griffin Senek, joined by my co-host Rob Goldberger. And today we are back post-Super Bowl Sunday. The Los Angeles Rams are now Super Bowl champions after beating the Cincinnati Bengals 23-20. to Definitely some controversy in there per usual in uh, close Super Bowl games. Some, some no calls, some calls that a lot of people think uh, were not good calls. Uh, but overall, it was a, a very competitive, close game all the way up until that final drive. And I'm, I'm just going to share the screen here. We're just going to jump right into it. Obviously, I mean, this was a great game. Uh, a lot you could, you know, dissect about these two teams' performances. I think there was a lot of surprising things. Um, what stood out to you in this one, Rob? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I thought, obviously, you know, Bengals came out very slow. But Joe Burrow struggled a little bit in that first half. Um, but the Rams offense, you know, wasn't very strong either. They didn't really capitalize. It felt like they had a chance to bury the Bengals early in the first half. They didn't really capitalize off of that. Um, uh, you know, Cam Akers, I think was not very good, uh, in this game. Couldn't really get a lot going on. Um, and they, the Rams kept going back to him over and over and over again. And I think sort of once they stopped doing that, and I, I mean, they sort of went away from running the ball on every first down, which is something that they were doing in the first half, you know, the first part of the third quarter. But once they went away from that, their offense sort of, you know, started moving and obviously led to that last drive. But um, the, the superstars won, won the Rams this game for them. I mean, Cooper Cup is obviously just, you know, he's a different he's, – he's different gravy is the only way to describe him. Um I, you know, he'll cook anybody in the league. Um, it, it, the way he's, he's just always open and he, and he's, he, he just so rarely drops. Uh, well, I mean, the Rams, I think really kept shooting themselves in the foot though. This, they, they really seemed to control the whole time. I mean, a lot of people didn't really think the Rams, I didn't really think that the Rams were, had ever lost control, but the Bengals had, did the thing that they did well. And they really were in position to the, uh, at the end to when they, they hung around long enough. Um, the, you know, the bet, the Rams and the chiefs both made a lot of mistakes against the Bengals. And I think you got to give the Bengals credit for that. They, they both played very mistake from football. And I think, you know, the, ultimately the Bengals downfall in the end was that offensive line. I mean, Joe Burrow just had no time in the second half because Aaron Donald, man, I think, you know, that's one of the all time great defensive performances you'll see in a Super Bowl. He was dominant. I mean, he, he just destroyed that line. Last he was, he was motivated. Uh, to come out and win the Super Bowl. I just think he wasn't going to allow the, the Rams to lose that in the end. And Matt Stafford, he didn't have the best game, but, you know, he came clutch when they needed him to. Um, that no-look pass was special, obviously. I mean, I'm sure everybody has seen it at this point. But that Cup and Stafford connection, man, it's different. We'll see We'll see how many guys, you know, the Rams are able to bring back next year. But the NFC, it's a little, it's you know, it's a little weak with the likely departures of Roger or, you know, Rodgers and Brady. But, I think Cup and, Cup and Stafford could reign supreme in the NFC, you know, for a couple of years, depending on who the Rams the Rams bring back. Yeah, I mean, this was a game that, um, you know, it, it was a, a very interesting one, that's for sure. I mean, Los Angeles came out really hot in those first, you know, few moments. I mean, Odell Beckham, I mean, really unfortunate that it appears this guy's torn his ACL again. I mean, this guy was due for a big payday once again. It really seemed like he had found himself, found his stride after those Cleveland days and, you know, early on, he got the big touchdown, had another big catch and obviously went down. And that really changed the course of this game for a good while. I mean, the Rams offense was just nowhere near as efficient without Odell Beckham on the field. And and like you said, I mean, the run game was just atrocious for Los Angeles and Cam Akers. I mean, as as heroic as it was and incredible that he came back um, that quick, he really did not have a good playoffs, to be honest. I mean, he was really not playing. I mean, that Arizona game, I guess you could look at and say he, he was a pretty solid had a pretty solid performance. But other than that, I mean, he had those two fumbles in the Tampa Bay game. This game was not any better. And not all of it's his fault. That offensive line didn't really help him out at, too much. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, Daryl Henderson was better in this game overall. Um, Cooper Cup, like you said, I mean, this guy's just an absolute superstar. I think he's he's really getting that recognition as, you know, I, I think it's him and Devontae in the top two. And, you know, you can look at it one way. I think Cooper Cup is in the system that makes him the most efficient and elite receiver, but Devontae Adams I think, is the most skilled at the moment. Um, I, you know, so, I'm yeah, sorry. what were you? I, I, I'll just, you know, chime in on that for a second. I think, obviously, Cooper Cup, uh, you know, Sean McVay built a system around Cooper Cup, and that's what great coaches do. And, you know, it's not Cooper Cup's fault that he's benefiting from this great system that was built around him. Yeah, I mean, Cooper Cup, 
guys as talented as it gets also. And I mean, like you said, I mean, this was what, what we thought was going to be the case happened uh, or was, you know, the problem for the Bengals. And that was the offensive line. I mean, this defense, I mean, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, these guys are just the elite of the elite. And the third member of that big three on the defense had a, you know, his day was interesting. Jalen Ramsey, obviously, you know, he got beat a little bit. That no call with T Higgins grabbing his face, Mac was, um, <laughs> you know, absolutely hor- horrific. I mean, it almost cost, it really almost changed the course of this game yeah, because you yeah. have that touchdown and then, I mean, you have Matt Stafford after throwing the interception. It seems like the Rams are just a little discombobulated. I mean, it was just not, not what you'd think. Um, I mean, Joe Mixon, man, this guy it was was one of my X factors. Him and Sam Hubbard, um, who also had a pretty solid game. These were the guys I felt would have to play well for the Bengals to be in this game. And and Joe Mixon really kept them in. I mean, rushing for four point eight yards. We saw the week before with San Francisco. Um, you know, it, it, they really found no running room. So for Joe Mixon to perform this strongly, um, it really kept him close. I don't know why he wasn't in on those third and fourth down situations. I think that's just Zach Taylor, you know, not having the experience and not having the trust in a guy like Joe Mixon. I, I just don't see any reason Samaji Perine should be in on those key situations, no matter what the situation is. Joe Mixon is a more than capable back. Uh, you know, he had five catches at the end of that. I know some were check downs and he had one yard, but the guy's, uh, you know, more than capable of catching the football. Uh, obviously Perrine I mean he could have dove on that last ball that's a, another controversial thing and obviously the hold on a uh, Cooper Cup on that last drive that got called on Logan Wilson bit controversial um, I don't think that one's as horrific as the pass interference um, to be 100% honest um, but the Bengals I mean they, Jamar Chase T Higgins showed up Tyler Boyd to be honest I mean this guy's I think he, he's been a little overhyped this year as kind of this elite third option. I think he's just a, a mediocre to all right receiver, to be honest. I don't think Tyler Boyd's really anything special. I think he's a great player, a uh, solid leader, but uh, you know, th- this isn't a, this wasn't, I think people kind of made their receiving core seem like the bucks when it, they had Mike Evans, AV and Chris Godwin, like that is a, a true three number ones. This is, you know, two elite players and Tyler Boyd, who's a, a solid receiver, but nothing special, but, yeah, I mean, you kind of touched on, I know I'm talking a lot here, but Joe Burrow, uh, not his best performance of the playoffs, partly due to the, you know, pressure he faced in that second half, but he was just not as, not able to be as efficient as some of the other previous weeks. Tough loss for the Bengals. I mean, this is, uh, it was a good game and they, it looked like, uh, you know, in that third quarter after the that interception that it was really starting to become a, a Bengals win and maybe if they scored that touchdown on, a touchdown on that drive, this would have been, a, we would be talking totally different right now. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is sort of the Rams' year, I, I think. I think if this is the year the Rams are going to win it, this is, you know, I think the Bengals are a good young team, but their fatal flaw really cost them in this game. I mean, they're going to have to draw, address the offensive line big time next year. Uh, Joe Burrow really just had no time to throw at the end of the game. He really didn't. Um, and like I said, Aaron Donald, I mean, that guy is just – he's unbelievable. And if he retires after – the Super Bowl, which I think there's a good chance, of, you know, that he does. What a career. I mean, what a career. One of the greatest defensive players to ever play the game. Probably the best interior lineman of all time. I mean, just an unreal player. And, I mean, he deserves to get one at the end if this is the end of his career. I mean, Aaron Donald's career deserves to be punctuated by a Super Bowl. So, I mean, yeah, I think the Rams playmakers made plays. And, I, I you know – Oh, uh, people have talked about that the Rams have built a team improperly or whatnot, and you know their future is going to suck. None of it matters now that you have a ring. You could be bad for the next ten years. None of it matters now that you have a ring. That's the goal of any franchise. McVay and Snead and all those guys. They don't care that they're going to have that they will have draft packs five years from now. But McVay's probably not even going to be there. I mean, he'll probably be in broadcasting by that point. They care about winning a championship, and that's the goal of the sport. I'm sorry, I just can't stand these complaints about oh the Rams traded all their first round picks. Of course they're going to be good. I mean. You know, that's how you went. That's they, they went for it. And that's why you improve Jared Goff over Matthew Stafford. And that's why you go get Von Miller in the middle of the season, you know, to make these crucial additions because everybody, everybody's going to make a play in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, you really look at uh, all these additions that they made during the season, OBJ, Von Miller. If they didn't make those moves, they wouldn't have won the championship at the end of the day. If they didn't have Odell Beckham, they wouldn't have won this game. Odell Beckham, even for the little time he was on the field, completely changed the course and, and you know, gave the Rams the ability to really you know, have a shot here. Um, Fascinating game. I mean, looking at the future for these two teams, I mean, both these two teams have a, a, you know, good bit of free agents. Uh, You know, Von Miller's a free agent. OBJ, obviously, now has the torn ACL on top of his impending free agency. And on the Bengals side, you got guys like Jesse Bates, obviously the leader of that defense, who's set to hit free agency. 
And we've kind of talked about the Bengals, how we felt this was their, uh, their big chance really and their shot to, uh, to kind of win it all. And that with the AFC, with all these young quarterbacks, even a tough division and who, you know, Brian Flores now is on that Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff, man. I mean, that is scary for that defense. Um, You know, that offense might be putrid, but that defense is going to be tough. I mean, uh, did not mean to click on that, but I mean, what do we, what do we think about these two teams futures? Obviously the Rams, Seems like a lot of guys right now up in the air. You know, it seems Sean McVay's coming back. I think that's all but confirmed. Aaron Donald. I mean, I I I just don't see him walking away right now. I feel like he wants one more shot, but I mean, I think he's definitely what else does he have to achieve? I think is the point. And and he's got all the, you know, he's not gonna have to worry about money. He's been paid his whole career. So what do you think on the future for these two teams? I mean, it's it's pretty fascinating, these two team situations. These are not two teams that um you know, might be title favorites right off the bat immediately, you know? No. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some other teams you look to when you look at the favorites for next year, I think the Rams are going to be decimated by free agency. And I think that's going to play. I think Aaron Donald made a comment at the parade, basically, that was like, if you get the guys back, I'll be back. It's going to be really tough for the Rams to get those guys back. I mean, you know, we know Odell Beckham is going after this year, just for example, he's not, he's not re-signing with the Los Angeles Rams. They don't have enough money to, 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 to resign him I, I don't think at least I mean I could you know this clip can make me look stupid in a couple months but I don't really think that's going to happen uh I, I think it really depends on who the Rams bring back because they're in a shitty cap situation they are it's 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 the reality of the situation but teams who win and GMs and coaches who are not sure where they will be in five years will mortgage the entire future for one more chance to the winning year and my guarantee is that to, that or my bet is that ex- that is exactly what the Rams will do is that they will do everything they can. They will push all the money down the line. The Eagles did it for a million years when they, you know, used to be when they were making the playoffs and they won the Super Bowl those years. They used to do it a million years in a row too, where they would just kick all the can kick the can down the line and <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll 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 be in cap hell five, six years from now. But my prediction is that they'll just mortgage their entire future for, you know, a chance to bring Aaron Donald back and one more shot. And for the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, we we've said that, you know, we don't have a lot of hope for them to get you know, this close again in every year, but I still think this is a team with a, with, with a really bright future um, and a really bright outlook. I think obviously the number one priority has to get, has to be getting, you know, your franchise QB Joe Burrow get a, a line the, the, they really are pretty solid elsewhere. I mean, their corners, Eli Apple specifically probably needs to be replaced, um, but their offensive line. I mean, every single one of them, uh, you know, you could argue that they need replacing. I mean, that, that that's where this team needs to go. But I think the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, they're, they're definitely in contention for that AFC North title next year. Um, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase will always give them a shot to win. Um, those two guys, pairing those two guys on the team, I think will always give them a shot to win in the AFC North. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just tough for the Bengals to get so, so, so close in such a stacked conference. And like I said, I think, I do think they played up to superior teams. I think there were, I think the Nagel, the Bengals are a very naggy team. I will give them credit. They're very, they don't go away. They, they have a lot of heart. I mean, I think Zach Taylor deserves a ton of credit for that, but you know, the, the Rams and the chiefs made so many mistakes to let them back in this game. I think it's got to hurt as a Bengals fan to not see the job done, especially after winning in the second half, you know, they weren't even blown out. I mean, they, they, they were in control in the second half. Um, and you know, uh, it's just, just sucks for the Bengals because, I, I think it's a really good team with a bright future, but I don't think they're getting they're getting back here anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I, I this was their shot. I, I do feel, um, but I mean, I, I would say they're the favorites for the AFC North. I mean, I think we don't want to discredit this team. I mean, this offense is, is sensational. If they can get an O line, I mean, imagine the things Joe Burrow is going to be able to do and Joe Mixon. Yeah. I mean, this team is uh, it, it would be real dangerous. And the defense has played so good in the playoffs that. You know, I think their defense is more than capable of uh, winning the games for them. I mean, their D-line has been sensational. Um, the corner room, uh, you know, obviously Eli Apple became kind of the uh, the meme of the playoffs of, of the Super Bowl. Um, you got me, Cole Hardman, Michael Thomas, numerous guys tweeting at him, Terry Kill. Um, there's work to be done. I mean, they got to keep Jesse Bates. I think that's even higher priority, to be honest, than the offensive line. I mean, he is the captain of the defense. He is your superstar on the defense. Um, you got to keep him and, and you got to build the old line. I mean, I think their draft this year should be entirely 
you know, basically cornerbacks and, and offensive linemen. I mean, that's kind of the, the spots where this team needs help. Maybe some linebacking help as well. Um, other than that, though, I mean, you've got quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. I mean, I think it's fine. I think it's almost works really well in that system and uh, seems to fit in nicely. So I think this, this team's got a lot of things that are set in place. I think there's just rooms where they need to improve it. And I think they will. And for the Rams, I mean, like you said, I mean, they are, I think they're going to give it, try and give it a one more shot kind of deal. Kind of like what we saw with Tampa Bay. I feel like they kind of brought everyone back for a year and didn't work out well, obviously, but um, the NFC is definitely more open than the AFC. I will say that like the Rams, I, I, Right. Yeah. I they, think, you know, it's tough. I mean, I really think San Francisco is going to be a, a tough team. I, I mean, I think Trey Lance, it's all going to be on Trey Lance. If Trey Lance is some stud, the 49ers will make the Super Bowl in my mind. But, um, you know, if he struggles, obviously it opens the door for teams like the Rams and uh, Green Bay. I mean, here's the thing, though. Green Bay is just a total question mark right now. If they and we've heard another that's another team that right now it seems like they're going to go all in potentially for one more season and just give it all for this one last run. So. If they do that, I mean, I know Aaron Rodgers' is history in the playoffs, but that would be a scary team. I would say that they would be the the NFC favorites just because Aaron Rodgers, the, the level he is playing at right now, is just it, it's just insanity. And I think that no matter the playoff success, you have to give them the credit. And but the Rams got a shot in it. Uh, uh, I think this is going to be a, a competitive team next year, a good team next year, a great team next year. Um, I think they'll right be back in the mix. Um, just losing guys like Von Miller, Odell Beckham, um, you know, guys like Robert Woods coming off ACL injuries. Eric Weddle was big for them in the playoffs. I know they'll get back Jordan Fuller, but there's just a lot of pieces that it feels like really contributed to this championship run that just aren't going to be there anymore. Andrew Whitworth is gone. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of holes on this team um, that they're going to have to address, but we'll see what they do to uh, kind of go in all in for one more season. I have, I have faith. I and mean, we saw it this year. They, they, they played their cards perfectly and it worked out amazing. So I'm excited to see what they do and for Cincinnati. I, I think they're just incredible young team. Um, they've just got some holes to fill at the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I guess with that, that will uh, do it for our Super Bowl coverage uh, for this episode. Um, we do, we do though uh, want to kind of talk a little bit of MLB um, we're not going to go all in. Obviously, the lockout is still um, ongoing at the moment. Uh, it seems like hopefully that they will start meeting more this week. Uh, but we're going to do some free agent uh, predictions of the guys who are remaining, just because we haven't really talked about some of these guys since uh, a bulk of, of players really, uh, really signed. So we're just going to kind of go through the top, you know, five, seven or so free agents, kind of talk through where we think they might end up. Uh, just as a fun kind of thing. And, um, you know, we're hopefully going to be talking more baseball, especially once the lockout ends. I know a ton of free agents are going to start signing. So we'll be doing our year predictions for baseball. Mock drafts for the NFL are going to start coming. NBA, as the playoffs get closer, we're going to be covering the NBA a lot more. Um, So still a lot of coverage. And NFL free agency will be around the corner, you know, quicker than we think. Um, So it should be good. But, um we're going to start first player. We will, uh, we will discuss is Carlos Gray, the best man on the market. Um, you know, he is apparently looking for, you know, we've heard, you know, over 300, 20, 30, $40 million. Obviously now with this lockout, I, I really don't think he's going to hit that number, which makes his situation a whole lot more interesting. Where do you think Carlos Gray is going to end up? I know the Yankees have been really tied to him. The Astros seem to still want him, but not being willing to give that number. Angels, Philly, some teams that maybe are in the mix or, or teams that could fit in. What do you think with Carlos Gray? Where is he going to end up? I think he's going to end up in New York, Griff. Uh, unfortunately, I know that makes you cringe. I know, I know. Uh, you don't love to hear that, but I, but I really do. I mean, they just, they just see. I've, I've seen this story too many times, man. I really do. I really have. I mean, I, I, I just don't see him going back to Houston personally. And I think, sort of, it's always been. I think it's always been sort of the Yankees for him, for me, not, 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 let me rephrase. I don't know how I'm trying to sit. If that makes sense to an extent. I mean, I just don't picture him any signing anywhere else than New York. I mean, I, I think it just, I, I just think the Astros are not going to be back in for him. And I, and I don't see anyone else that's going to be willing to give him the money. I think New York is probably going to be willing to give him. And I think he's going to go to New York. 
I'm going to go with the team uh, that I've heard he's linked to. And I think is a team that I feel like, you know, would be able to pay him maybe more than some of these other teams. And it's fine giving out some money. I'm going to go with the Chicago Cubs. Um, I think the Cubs are a team that after last year, uh, they trade everyone away. I think they're still looking for that. Um, oh my God. Why did, <laughs> sorry about that. My mic changed real quick. I got like a uh, weather alert. Uh, there's, there's some snow here. It's actually coming down pretty heavy. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Chicago Cubs. I think they're in need of a superstar. Um, I think it's a good team. Um, and I think that, you know, I've seen Marcus Stroman trying to recruit him. I think he's been linked there. I think it's a good spot. I mean, I think he, at the end of the day, he's already won championships. So at the end of the day, I think he wants his money. Um, I, th- I don't think he's necessarily motivated to win at this point. I mean, I think he, he's more about getting the biggest payday. And I think that's where he's going to go. And I think the Cubs right now might give him the biggest payday, to be honest. I mean, that, that team's got a low payroll right now. And that's a team that's had high payrolls. And they've They've proven they're willing to spend some money. So I'm going to go to Chicago Cubs for Carlos Correa. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Um, all right. The next player we're going to discuss, Freddie Freeman. I feel like I know what we're both going to say, but the New York Yankees and the Dodgers have been linked to him, as well as obviously the Atlanta Braves. Do you see any world in which Freddie Freeman is not playing first base for the Atlanta Braves on opening day? No, I don't. No, I do not, Griffin. Uh, simple as. Simple as I think he's a brave for life. I, I think Freddie Freeman will never leave Atlanta. And I'm speaking through just unbelievable pain saying that. By the way. <laughs> um, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying that the Yankees will give him enough money so to the point where he leaves Atlanta. I really do, but I don't see any world in which Freddie Freeman isn't retiring in Atlanta Brave. You know, to be honest, none of these three teams make me happy. I wish there was another team, like, you know, some American League. Like, why can't the Angels get involved? You know, I, I would love that for Freddie. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he'll end up at the Braves. I, I think the Braves were very stubborn. But, I mean, if the Atlanta Braves lose Freddie Freeman, man, I mean, that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, the New York it's Mets. at the franchise. Yeah, I mean, it's just a bad look for them. And to be honest, I think that sh- – completely changes their their outlook for the year like i would say not even trying to be biased i think the braves with freeman you have to put as the favorites in the national league east but without freddie freeman i'd say the new york mets have to be the favorite in the division to be honest um he's just that impactful of a player he's just an absolute superstar one of the top five ten best players in mlb i mean this guy last, last year he started off pretty cold and then at the end of the year he was one of the best i mean you look at the stats and you couldn't even tell um this guy's just truly sensational if you went to the Yankees, I, I mean, it'd be frustrating. If you went to the Dodgers, then they're forming a super team. So it's like, a, a, yeah, probably Atlanta is the best option to be honest. Even though they're they're in the division, <laughs> um, I think that you know, um, you know, if those other teams get them, that'd be really scary. But Freddie Freeman, I, I do believe will retire a Brave. I think the Braves, you know, they, they just can't be stubborn. I mean, they, I think he loves it there too. Like for instance, like Juan Soto, I got a, I'm looking at a list of these guys, and he obviously declined the 350 million dollar yeah. extension, like. I think he's probably gone from it. I think, to be yeah, honest, no, I, think, I agree. I, I think Steve Cohen's going to take a big swing at Juan Soto, if I'm being honest. I mean, I just, he's not staying in Washington. He is not no. staying in Washington. No shot. They're being run into the ground, by the way. Speaking of, I mean, completely run into the ground. I mean, trading, trading Trey Turner and Max Scherzer just really, <laughs> and losing Kyle Schwarber. I mean, they, they were a good team with when Schwarber yeah, was no, healthy. That team was coming yeah, back. Yeah, no, there was a period in June where it looked like, I don't know, they, they were going to sneak to the top of the NL East. But. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if a player like Juan Soto's caliber hits hits the market, man, I mean, that's just going to – it's going to be an exciting bidding war. Because, I, I mean, I, I know the New York oh, Mets yeah. will be involved. In yeah, it. he'll, get, like, he'll, he'll be, get the biggest – yeah, he's going to get the biggest contract in MLB history by a large margin. Especially if he hits free agency. I mean, that, I mean what – the thing – my question is, like, what owners would really – go out and give him i mean you got to think both new york teams will be in dodgers obviously the dodgers obviously the dodgers will be involved the angels will probably be involved as well I mean, they both always, LA, both so, LA, maybe that'll be the top four both la teams and both new york teams yeah that that, 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 that we see that we've seen that story before for sure I mean, <laughs> maybe yeah. the phillies will jump in there we never yeah, know. Yeah. wow this, it's john like middleton, avalanche outside right now yeah, john middleton would have a heart attack john middleton would have a heart attack looking at the amount of money they pay him per year. <laughs> Trevor Store, oh no, Chris Bryant is the next guy on the list. Chris Bryant's a very interesting player, to be honest. I think his market is going to be fascinating. You know, to be honest, Jesus, sorry, this weather is just 
crazy. Um, no, you're good. Um, Chris Bryant, I mean, this guy can play anywhere, but, you know, he's really kind of seems to decline a little bit. We've seen Mariners, Phillies have been involved, Rockies, Astros, Mets, Angels, Padres, a lot of teams. Where do you think he ultimately ends up? I'm going to go with the Seattle Mariners uh, here for, for, for Chris Bryant. I think it makes a lot of sense for him. Um, I think, you know, he's obviously can serve sort of that veteran role and a lot, lot, you know, that team with a lot of up and coming talent, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to go with the Seattle Mariners here. I think it's obvious that they really want to make a move. I mean, you know, they, a lot, their, their, their leadership has said as much, I'm pretty sure their leadership has said as much, but uh, I, I think they're looking to make a splash and I, and I think Chris Bryant's going to be the guy. I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I think that the price is going to be right for them. I think them waiting till after the lockout for a guy like Brian's going to pay off. Like I think his, he's going to be a guy who gets definitely screwed by a, you know, not signing before. Um, I think Seattle is definitely a team in there. I mean, I don't see the Mets signing him to be honest, nor do I necessarily want the Mets to sign him. I don't think it's the best investment to be honest, but I think for a team like the Phillies, I mean, they just need Chris Bryant. Um, he's a guy that, a, a versatility guy who you could stick in the outfield if you need to play multiple positions, even in the infield. Phillies need that. And uh, a, a leader like him, a Vegas guy with, with Bryce Harper, you know, Bryce would be happy with that. So I think it's a perfect match. I think, to be honest, Chris Bryant to the Phillies, uh, I expect it to be honest. I think that's a, I think that'll be the Philadelphia Phillies big signing of the off season. I hope you're right. I hope you're right, Griffin. Next guy on our list. Uh, really the, Oh, I guess. The second, I'm trying to phrase this. I was going to say the biggest shortstop, but I forgot about Correa. So the second biggest shortstop in the market, Trevor Story. Um, you know, he's looking for a big deal. Um, you know, Javi Baez obviously got six years, $140 million. Um, so he'll, he might be trying to get around that. I'm going to start this one. I'm going to go with the New York Yankees um, because I said that, you know, the New York Yankees would not get Carlos Correa. So I think they're going to pivot to Trevor Story, and I think they need a shortstop. I think that's clear. I think they need one of these two guys, and I think I don't think they want to go all out. Um, I think they're still trying to work through a potential judge extension, which, I mean, you heard he had made some comments the other day that, you know, if, if it doesn't get done by opening day, that could be a guy who leaves, which would be fascinating. Um, so I think that they're probably going to pursue a judge extension and then try and get story as well. Just because, I mean, signing Correa, if you sign Correa to me, I, I just don't think you have the money for an Aaron judge extension. I think that's just way too much money. Um, so I'm going to go with Trevor story. I think it's a more affordable option. We'll keep their options open with judge and uh, not financially, you know, constrain them while still giving them a quality shortstop to put in their lineup. So I'm going to go with the hopeful prediction here. Uh, and I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, you know, Dombrowski has already told Didi basically to not expect to be the starting shortstop next year. So we know we're, they're looking to upgrade that position. Um, or basically he said, don't expect your role to be safe in, in, in more or less words, but whatever. I mean, I, I think it's definitely possible. I, I think they've been looking to upgrade at shortstop for years. I mean, their defense defense last year was just – I get PTSD trying to remember their defense from last year. I mean, the, <laughs> I remember watching so many games and just laughing, man. I'm... Yeah, dude, oh, that, they, it was a bit of, I mean, Trevor Story would obviously solve a lot of this problems. I think this. I think Story will be the the, the Phillies guy in free agency this year. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good fit for for for, for the Phillies. Yeah. Um, next on the list, Nick Castellanos. Um, you know, really good year from him. He's going to get a good contract. Um, I don't think the Reds are really involved. I think that's, uh, you know, sadly over. But what do you think for Nick? Nick, Nick, Nick Castellanos. I don't know why I'm stuttering. That's a good question. I have a prediction if you want me to go first. No, because I'm between, I'm between two teams right now. You can go for it. You, you, let's see. Uh, let's see. I want to hear what you I'm going to go with Miami. Um, this is the team I've heard linked to him the most. I, even though they signed, obviously, you know, Garcia with the, uh, you know, DH now essentially being approved for the NL. Um, there's always room for a guy like Castellanos, and that lineup needs a, a big bat like him. Um, their young pitching is fantastic, but that lineup is really still lacking. And they, who do they really have in that lineup when you look at it? That's a you know an impactful player that can really you know get the job done. Not really anyone, to be honest. Um, they've got you know guys like Josh Chisholm, who's a solid young player, but he's not some stud. I mean, this team needs a, a, a big basher, I think, and Castellanos kind of gives them that. Um, and this team, I think they want to give out a, a contract or so that's not one of these top tier guys, but you know, 
proves that they're trying to win. And I think Castellanos does that. I think it's a good fit. And uh, I'm going to go Nick Castellanos, the Miami Marlins. Yeah, I was between two teams. I was between the Giants and the Marlins here. And because you picked the Marlins, I'll just be different. I'll pick the Giants. Um, I think they're going to be in the market. Uh, the guy, you know, I think he's a game-changing player, Nick Castellanos. If he continues his pace from last year, obviously. But I think, um, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I just think he's a, he's a good fit for them, I think. I, I think he'll be a San Francisco Giant. That's and I, I don't really have an explanation for you to be a hundred percent honest. It's a good move. I, it's he fills the role of, the, of Chris Bryant. Uh, yeah, that's basically what I'm. I mean, they're losing Bryant. I mean, I think they're gonna. I think they're they're they're, they're obviously gonna go for it again next year. You know, give 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 give, give good old Gabe some support, some financial support down down there. Yeah, Gabe did an excellent job. I mean, what a what a difference, a change of scenery made for him. Um, <laughs> Here's an interesting guy, Kyle Schwarber. Um, now with the DH in the NL, I mean, he can he kind of has full reign of options here. Um, what do you think with Schwarber? Uh, I already picked Trevor Story the Phillies, but I'm gonna fuck it. Uh, I just uh, I you know as a Phillies fan, I just want to see Kyle Kyle Schwarber slug like 40 home runs a year over the over that short right field fence. Um, but as a logical MLB fan. Where do I where do I think he'll be he'll go? He's a very you know I'm gonna go a little unorthodox. I don't know how unorthodox it is, but oh I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles Dodgers here, um, which I think would be horrible. That's scary. <laughs> and it's very scary, but I think it's an assign it's a signing they can obviously afford afford to make. I think it'd be very smart for Kyle Schwarber to go there. He'd have a ton of protection over there. And I think he could sit there, like you said, be the DH in Los Angeles, probably get a World Series and club 40 home runs a year without ever having to walk on out of the field. I mean, I think it, I think it'll be – I think it's a great fit for him. But uh, I really hope it doesn't happen. I mean, speaking of the Dodgers, um, that's not where I have Schwarber going. But, I mean, I'm very curious to see what happens with Trevor Bauer because obviously he was proved uh, – right. you know, or they ruled innocent on him. But we've heard rumblings that, you know, the Dodgers don't really want him back, that a lot of players didn't like him. And, and that – yeah, and that could they, they could he also could face punishment from the MLB for from which is it, well. which I, I mean if they found him innocent I mean it, it's kind of tough to see the I mean the whole thing is very weird I'm not going to comment on it because so, uh, their 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 rules are it's like they have their own separate thing to like figure it out I don't I'm not going to pretend to know what's going on yeah. but yeah time will tell with that situation but I mean they're you know they supposedly owe him like 35 million dollars or something I mean. Man, I mean, if he was with the Mets, that would have been a total nightmare. I'm so glad that you know they really worked out for them to land Max Scherzer instead of him it's a just, year later. To me, I, I you know obviously he's been cleared to his to an extent, but I mean, it's just it's hard for me to imagine. He seems to just make so many enemies, man. He really, yeah. It's hard for me to you know to for, it's hard for me to imagine him getting back into a competitive MLB clubhouse. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but with Schwarber, I'm between three teams, to be honest. I'm between the Boston Red Sox. I think they really liked him, and, and they still need him. The Phillies, and I'm going to I'm gonna do this the third team, and I'm just going to do it out of a, a personal hope. I'm going to go with the New York Mets. Um, I think Schwarber is a, a piece that this team really could use. I still think they need that big lefty bat. I know I, I, it's tough to say because, look, Robbie Cano is coming back, and you got to pay him $20 million. But at the end of the day, Steve Cohen's shown he didn't really care about money and that he's willing to put whatever into this team. So I don't think Robbie Cano's $20 million is going to stop them from signing Kyle Schwarber, who, I mean, you put Kyle Schwarber at DH. I think that team, they just need a true lefty power bat. I mean, you've obviously got guys like Alonzo, Lindor is a switch hitter and all that. Um, You know, Nimmo's fine, but they need a true lefty power guy and they've needed one. And I mean, the last guy who was like a true left, left left-handed power hitter for the Mets really for me um, was Lucas Duda. I mean, that guy was kind of clubbing home runs. Um, that big power lefty bat. That's kind of, or I, I mean, you could even say Jay Bruce, I guess, in his days. But I mean, the true power guy, I feel like Duda was more that guy than Jay Bruce. Um, so I'm going to go with Schwarber to the Mets. I mean, I think that's a, it's a fit that, you know, I, th- I think it fits perfectly. I think it gives the Mets something they absolutely need. And I think it gives the Mets some leverage too, because I think the Mets are going to move on from, you know, someone like Adam Smith, JD Davis, or Jeff McNeil. I really hope it's not Jeff McNeil. I think that'd be a, a catastrophic mistake. Um, but I think they've proven that, you know, they, uh, J.D. Davis and Tom Smith, I, I think they're quality baseball players. I, I just don't know if their time's going to be with the Mets. So that's my take on uh, Schwarber. 
kind of wishful thinking. Uh, I think he'll probably, to be honest, a, a realistic prediction. I think he'll end up in Boston. I think he liked it there. And, uh, you know, I think he, uh, that's a team that needs him for sure. All right. Next guy, Carlos Rodon, uh, one of the more interesting pitchers had a fantastic season, had some, you know, injury issues in the second half. Um, does not have a qualifying offer attached to him though. So it gives, uh, you know, it puts him in the play for teams who don't want to give up their, uh, you know, second picks, for instance, I know the New York Mets because of the Kumar rocker situation, they have two first round picks. So it really did not, uh, you know, the Mets were really trying to not go for a guy who had received the qualifying offer, um, puts them in play for them and kind of gives my insight on the prediction. I'm going to, I'm just saying, I'm going to, I think he's going to be the Mets final piece in that rotation. To be honest, I, I think Rodon will happen more likely than Schwarber. I think Schwarber's kind of just a, that was just kind of wishful thinking, but uh, I think Carlos Rodon is a, it, the Mets need a lefty in the middle of that rotation. Rodon's a great pitcher. I know he's got injury concerns, but I think it's worth the risk for the Mets. I think shelling out some money for this guy would be a, a right move. And I think he fits well into that rotation. I think he's a great pitcher. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the New York Mets room. I think it makes sense. And uh, to be honest, I, I see this more than Schwarber. Schwarber, yeah, I don't know. Just having gonna, some fun. I'm going to go with the Chicago Cubs here, uh, actually. It's a good uh, one. Yeah. I think they're going to look to add, you know, another starting pitcher alongside Stroman. I think they're going to look to accelerate that rebuild a little bit. But I think, I think you know, he's going to he's gonna go across town. And I think he's staying in Chicago. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think uh, I'm not – just you know there have been a lot of reports that they're going to add another big name and i think this is going to be it and you know i think they're really going to come to look they're they're really they're really looking to add pitching and i think Renan's going to be the guy and i think obviously incentivizing that that cross down move is definitely an incentive not having to pick up your thing people underrate it but not having to pick up your things and move halfway across the country is it really does you know a lot of players really do like it so yeah all right we're going to do two more guys um does Clayton Kershaw leave the Los Angeles Dodgers? What do you think? And if so, where does he end up? Man, it's really hard for me to see him anywhere but a Do- in a Dodgers uniform, isn't it? I mean, you can't even really picture it. Um, what's Jesus? I really can't. Can I even predict him leaving the Dodgers? I don't know if I can even. I have one team that I think he would. The only I think there's only the one Rangers, other option. Right. Yeah, the Rangers. The only yeah, other I mean, team. Yeah, I'll go with the Texas Rangers here. I mean, I, I I think he'll go back home, and I think he's gonna. Uh, I think he'll resign back home to to finish his career off. I'll go with the Texas. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it it sucks to say, but I think Clayton Kershaw has. Uh, yeah, he's lost. His he's step. winding down. He's winding yeah, down. Yeah. Um, the injuries are just becoming a lot for him, and and. and he, he pitched good, but, I mean, he missed almost half of – at least half of the season, it seems like, at the end. So, I, I, I just don't know. I, I just think for the Dodgers, I mean, if this guy's looking for, like, $20 million, I just don't know if they're, they're going to be willing to do that, as, as painful as that is for them. Um, I think he goes to Texas for maybe a year or two. I think Texas, they, they're just trying to get some guy, fans in the stands in their new stadium. Um, so, it's a fun move. Keeps him close to home, which I think he'd like. You know, he can finally raise his kids down there full time and I think he rides into the sunset maybe he goes two more years and then calls it a career I mean true surefire hall of famer first ballot I mean that's easy so he really doesn't have much more to do he's already won a championship um I can see I I, I see it realistically it is weird to picture I'm not on the Dodgers but yeah I don't know so man <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely uh he's definitely an injury risk at this point uh in his career for sure yeah like yeah if I think the Dodgers, if I had to choose, if I'm the Dodgers between like a Carlos Rodon and a Clayton Kershaw, like I, I think you got to go with Carlos Rodon at the end of the day. I don't know. We'll see. Last guy on the list is uh, one that I find very interesting, and I'm very curious to where he ends up. Michael Conforto. Um, Sorry about that, Gary. You're good. Um, Conforto, you know, really a, a down year that hurt him and, and hurt his stock with the Mets. I mean, I, I thought Conforto would definitely be re-signed after that short season, and then you see last season and just a pure disaster. Um, I think it's an interesting case. I mean, I could see him if his market's not good, I could see him going for a one-year deal somewhere. Where do you think he ends up? And do you think it will be a multi-year deal? Or do you think he's going to have to sign a one-year prove it kind of deal if he wants to get really paid? So I'm going to go with the Miami Marlins here for, for Michael Conforto. Um, 
And I think I, I I think he'll sign a multi-year deal down there. Um, I think he'll he'll be down there for the long run. I think Miami's just gonna make an effort to actually try to be something real and not just the team that all the you know not just this nothing team. Um, and I think you know obviously Conforto was not 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 good last year, but I I, I think you know I think that 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 they're, they're he's gonna go down in Miami, maybe less pressure than there is in New York, obviously go down there for a career revival. Um, and I think he's going to be down there for a couple of years. So, um, I, I, you know, considering, I think also, you know, the outfielder market, what Marte got, what Chris Taylor got, I think he's going to be looking for a multi-year deal. So. This one's tough, man. I'm going to be honest. Um, I have no idea where I think Michael Conforto is going to end up. I mean, I see Seattle, to be honest, um, even though they've got a lot of outfielders, because he's from that area, I could see them making a move, but I don't know. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles Angels. Um, I think they're a team that's always striving to get better. Right field's kind of a spot where I could see them making a move. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Confortos of the Angels. I think it's a potential interesting spot. I think that team, um, they obviously have Otani, but outside of him, um, they could use another lefty bat or so. Um, I guess they do have Jared Walsh, but I don't know, man. I'm gonna go with the. Mike, Mike can forward to the Angels on a multi-year deal. I mean, I think the Angels, I don't know. The thing with Conforto that's interesting is like he, he you know, obviously has the qualifying offer attached to him. So you got to think that this guy's looking for a, a multi-year deal and teams would even be looking to sign him to a multi-year deal because you don't really want to give up a pick for a guy who's going to be there for one year and just leave. So um, just kind of realize that. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, Definitely tough to tell, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that, that will do it for this week's episode of Outside the Arena. Thank you guys so much for all the support uh, during the NFL season. Um, our coverage is not ending there. We're going to be talking about the NFL for months to come. Hopefully, MLB has made significant progress by the next time we are filming this episode and we finally can start talking some baseball, get back into some games, get closer and closer to spring training. Um, but until then, we'll be doing stuff like this. We'll find fun things to do. NBA, we'll be talking about. Maybe we'll find some weird sports to talk about, too. You never know. Maybe we'll start talking some soccer, some NHL, UFC, boxing. Who knows? We'll, we'll, but, uh, you know, there's always going to be episodes each Saturday, Sunday, whenever this ends up coming out, probably Sunday. Um, but with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, do all that. Uh, go follow us on Instagram at Outside the Arena Podcast. Go follow us both on Instagram. Go check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Outside the Arena. And yeah, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all next week on Outside the Arena.